India is a distinct geographical entity with a variety of terrain, altitudes, weather, flora and fauna. Shielded from the west by the Kirtar, Suleiman and Safed Kohl ranges, the northwest is guarded by the forbidding Hindukush mountain range and its continuation, the snowbound Karakorams. Together, they cap the landmass whose entire northern boundary is formed by the vast mountain chain of the mighty Himalayas that effectively isolate the rest of the country from the Asian landmass. The expanse of the Indian Ocean laps the entire southern coastline. The Lakshadweep Islands in the Arabian Sea and the Andamans and Nicobar Island chain in the Bay of Bengal serving as the country's seaward outposts. Towards the east, the country is separated from Myanmar by the north-south aligned chain of the Arakan Yoma and its northern extension, the Naga and Patkoi hills, that in turn merge into the eastern extremity of the Himalayas. India's history has been profoundly influenced by its environment and topography. Its geography has dictated political boundaries, social responses and ethnic expansion. The 6,000 km long land border of the subcontinent takes us from the snow-covered through the forest-clad to the arid and bare. Since early in the 20th century, when the Wright brothers first took to the skies, aviation and air power have soared across the horizons into space. The last century in particular has witnessed the strategic emergence of air power as an extension of diplomacy or as an instrument of war. The manifestation of its potency and essence in the past decade was unprecedented. In the Persian Gulf War, the Bosnian air campaign, Kosovo, Kargil or even Afghanistan. India lies in a difficult geopolitical environment and therefore has to maintain a high degree of strategic preparedness. National security and international stability are vital prerequisites for any nation's survival and prosperity. Assuring security and stability requires diplomacy, resources, Vigilance, reach and power. Vigilance to anticipate and deter threats, strategic reach to ensure credibility and overwhelming power to prevail in conflicts and win India's future wars. Binding the diverse landmass of the subcontinent together, the IAF's domain stretches from Indira Point in the Greater Nicobar Island to Indira Kaul, the northernmost point on the Siachen Glacier, in a seamless operational medium. Keeping critical lifelines open in some of the remotest corners of the world, the transport fleet of the Indian Air Force flies around the clock, operating a variety of aircraft optimized for extreme environments. The induction of the four-engine Illusion IL-76 has significantly enhanced the heavy airlift capability of the IAS transport fleet. When required, they have flown in main battle tanks, infantry combat vehicles, heavy artillery and other bulk equipment. With an airlift capacity of 40 tons, these aircraft have airlifted entire infantry battalions with their equipment and frontline ammunition across the subcontinent in a matter of hours.
The twin-engined AN-32s have been the standard medium tactical transport aircraft since the mid-80s, capable of carrying a 5.5-ton payload of 40 paratroopers at a time. The AN-32 is the main workhorse of the IAF. For an army deployed across the length of the Himalayas and often beyond, the IAF is always on call to meet their air logistics requirements while the rest of the force trains, exercises and prepares for the full spectrum of operations. This airlift capability acts as a vital force multiplier for India's defense and paramilitary forces, making it possible to rapidly relocate troops, equipment and material from one theater of operations to another, sometimes thousands of kilometers apart. The Indian Air Force also operates the world's largest tactical transport helicopter, the Mi-26. In an ambulance role, it can carry more than 60 stretcher cases at a time or lift up to 20 tons of weight. Ideally suited for transporting armored fighting vehicles, howitzers and other heavy loads to high altitudes, the Mi-26 is powered by twin 11,400 HP engines. Besides transporting a large number of fully equipped troops into inaccessible areas, the ability to lift bulldozers and other underslung equipment adds a vital dimension to the IAF's overall capabilities. Light helicopters also have proven themselves time and again. Their versatility and utility play a vital role in air transportation. Despite having transferred the bulk of its light helicopter fleet to the Indian Army in the mid-80s, the IAF flies two variants of the HAL-built Alouette helicopters virtually all over the country. Used in forward air control, communications, training and a number of general duty roles, they are fitted with a power plant that results in increased performance for less fuel burn that proves especially efficient for mountain operations. The workhorses, especially for the far-flung outposts in the northeast, are the ubiquitous Mi-8 and the Mi-17 medium helicopters. It sometimes takes days and weeks to reach these locations by surface, as is the case with the BSF post at Parva. Using helicopters, however, casualties can be evacuated into lower Assam within a couple of hours. The attack helicopter has assumed an important role in modern warfare. Every part of these helicopters encompasses duplicated systems designed to enhance survivability in the face of intense fire from the ground. Powered by paired engines in the 2000 HP class, the Mi-25 and its upgraded variant, the Mi-35, are extremely effective in support of ground troops in certain conditions. Dagger 1, climb 5 kilometers, 2, climb 4. With a highly accurate computer-based navigation and attack system, laser designators and the ability to carry an array of purposeful weaponry, the twin-engine Jaguar symbolizes the IAF's deep strike force. This is a term that denotes a combat aircraft's ability to penetrate the enemy airspace at high speeds and deliver its heavy weapon loads accurately many hundreds of kilometers into enemy territory. These aircraft have the ability to strike at the enemy's strategic targets to carry out interdiction of his lines of communication to destroy his armed forces on the ground or at sea as well as attack his airfields and other vital installations on the ground. <laughs> 